Hello, welcome to my channel, My Student Support System. In today's class, we will discuss about first aid in bleeding or hemorrhage. Dear students, this class is in English, and if you want to study in Hindi, just click on I button and you will get link to the Hindi class of first aid in bleeding. Let us start bleeding. What is the definition of bleeding or hemorrhage? Bleeding is defined as the escape of blood from blood vessels. Sometimes bleeding may lead to life threatening situations if not controlled in time. So, first aid is bleeding is very important. We should know that what are the causes of bleeding. There are main three causes of bleeding. Number one, traumatic bleeding means by trauma or accidents, medical conditions and some medicines. We will discuss these three points one by one. First is traumatic bleeding. Any injury can cause to traumatic bleeding. Traumatic injuries vary in their severity. Common types of traumatic injuries are abrasions. Abrasions is very slight or very uh, mild uh, trauma. You can see here, just upper layer of skin is affected and there is very less amount of blood escape or hemorrhage. Second is contusion. Contusion is the collection of blood in subcutaneous tissue and it becomes bluish like this. Laceration, laceration means wound formation like this. Puncture wound from sharp items like needles, nails or knife. Crushing injury and gunshot wounds. These may lead to traumatic bleeding. Second cause is medical conditions. There are some medical conditions or disorders which can cause bleeding. Bleeding due to medical condition is less common than traumatic bleeding. Conditions that can cause bleeding includes hemophilia, leukemia, liver disorders, thrombocytopenia and vitamin K deficiency. Third cause is use of some medicines as for medicinal use but they may cause bleeding. Some medicines can increase chances of bleeding or even cause heavy bleeding sometimes. Medications that may be responsible for bleeding include anticoagulants such as aspirin, clopidogrel, dipyridamol, ticlopidine, warfarin, enoxaparin and heparin. Now we come to the classification of hemorrhage, all types of hemorrhage. Actually there are many types of classifications. Mainly there are three classifications of bleeding. Number one based on surface of bleeding, based on involvement of blood vessel and based on amount of blood loss. First we will see what is the classification based on surface of bleeding. Based on surface of bleeding, it is classified as internal bleeding and external bleeding. Internal bleeding, when the bleeding is from within the body cavity or under the skin, it is concealed, not open. It is known as internal bleeding. It can not be seen immediately, but later blood may be seen coming out of mouth, nose, stool or in urine. External bleeding. External bleeding is the bleeding from outer surface of body and can be seen immediately. It is known as external bleeding. Second classification is based on involvement of blood vessel. Based on involvement of blood vessel, it is classified as arterial bleeding, venous bleeding and capillary bleeding. Arterial bleeding when the bleeding is from artery 
there is first blood loss in this type of bleeding venous bleeding when the blood is coming out of veins in this type blood come very slowly but continuously and capillary bleeding when the bleeding is from capillaries in this type blood come out very very slowly like oozing drop by drop and the amount of blood loss is very less and it stops very easily and third classification is based on amount of blood based on amount of blood loss bleeding is classified as class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 when the amount of blood loss is less than 750 ml it is class 1 bleeding if it is 750 to 1500 ml then it is class 2 hemorrhage when it is 1500 to 200 ml then it is class 3 hemorrhage and when it is more than 2 liter then it is class 4 hemorrhage now what are the signs and symptoms of bleeding signs and symptoms of bleeding depend upon the type and severity of bleeding which may include external continuous bleeding which can be seen shallow breathing dizziness confusion sweating loss of consciousness low blood pressure rapid heart rate weak pulse and excessive thrust now we come to the first aid in bleeding what we should keep in our mind that we have to stop the life threatening condition or heavy bleeding first point is don't remove any clothing or debris on the wound don't remove large or deeply embedded objects don't probe the wound or attempt to clean it your first job is to stop bleeding wear disposal gloves if possible second point is stop the bleeding place a sterile bandage or clean cloth on the wound press the bandage firmly with your palm to control bleeding apply constant pressure until the bleeding stops maintain pressure by binding the wound with a thick bandage or a piece of clean cloth don't put direct pressure on eyes injury or when a sharp instrument sharp uh, object is emptied secure the bandage with adhesive tape or continue to maintain pressure with your hands if possible raise an injured limb above the level of heart next is help the injured client or person lie down calmly if possible place the person on a rug or blanket to prevent loss of body heat calmly reassure the injured person don't remove gauze or bandages if the bleeding seeps through the gauze or other piece on the wound add another bandage on the top of it and keep pressing firmly on the area you can use tourniquets a tourniquet is effective in controlling life threatening bleeding from a limb apply tourniquet if you are trained in how to do so when emergency help arrive explain how long the tourniquet has been in place immobilize the injured body part as much as possible leave the bandages in place and get the injured person to an emergency room as soon as possible apply pressure we can control bleeding by applying direct or indirect pressure direct pressure is applied directly on the wound for mild bleeding you can see here directly on the wound we can apply pressure this is known as direct pressure and indirect pressure when we apply the pressure above the bleeding part on the pressure points for example here bleeding is here and we are applying on this artery okay so here you can see any uh, other pressure points like brachial artery iliac artery popliteal artery femoral artery and brachial artery here and here superficial temporal artery so we can uh, control the heavy bleeding by applying indirect pressure if the bleeding is not stopped it may lead to shock which is a life threatening situation so 
arrange for transporting the patient to the hospital as early as possible and call for assistance 112 so that help reaches at the spot thank you students you can continue to watch my channel you can subscribe the channel my student support system you can visit my blog for preparing your notes that is my nursing students dot blogspot.com and you can follow me on twitter at the rate student_nurse